This is a TV guy. and the penitentiary. Eventually those four were moved back there, like I said, separated. It's going to sound a little crazy, but those guys were actually named Red, White, Blue, and Rusty. The most powerful inmate here for years was Red Snyder. Uh, in order to get power in prison, you have to make sure everybody's afraid of you. And that was the case with Red. Most of the inmates liked Red and respected him, but they didn't give him any grief unless they wanted to be dead. Red actually told the COs here, as long as you don't get in my way, no problem. If someone says bothering you, I'll kill him for you. So that's basically what Red's thinking. He respected the CEOs, and he would take care of them. Anyhow, this is what happened back here. Uh, Red and Rusty were the only two of those men that were allowed to be on the yard together. The problem with that, they got along. The problem was, Rusty was Blue's punk, and Rusty took orders from Blue. Blue wanted Red dead. Rusty got the order to do Red's murder. Red's murder happened in the afternoon, November 16, 1992. It was their yard time. The CEO went back there and unlocked Red's door and Rusty's door. Because of the slam ride, when it's slid over this way, it covers the doors. The CO can get out of there before the doors open. When the CO left and the slam ride came open, Rusty ran into Red Cell that afternoon and stabbed Red 37 times. So, I'm trying to find, I usually show you a weapon back there. Let me see if you're standing by a weapon. <laughs> Okay, here's a little weapon, little tiny weapon cut off this cell door. You might find one somewhere. Find another door, they're everywhere. Uh, the inmates normally cut weapons from the steel plates on these doors or the sides of beds. 
They take a long time to make a weapon. They are cutting steel with dental floss with toothpaste on it. When they get the steel off of the door, the side of a bed, they sharpen it on a concrete floor. All these men ate in their cells. When the CEOs came back here to feed them, they would have food thrown back on them. Other things that they got thrown on them were scalding hot water, heated baby oil, urine, and feces. Somebody told me that a CEO here got close to a door and he had a broomstick run into his mouth. Anyhow, all that abuse is why they put all the steel mesh on these cell doors and all this fencing here was put here to protect CEOs. Now later, the CEOs had more protection. Later years, they had flank jackets, helmets with visors, and shields. They ended up with a plexiglass shield on wheels that were brought right up to the cell door and give them only enough room to put the food tray through. These inmates were let out of their cells only two at a time. Whenever they walked through the cell block, there's a CO on the other side of the fence with a shotgun that walked through with them. They also kept COs up in the cages along the walls with weapons. <coughs> They didn't get much heat here, and they would only let them have one blanket. Those radiators under the window are the only sources of heat in the whole cell block. And if they are throwing out any heat, they can always go off, because the COs that are being abused here are in control of the heat. The broken windows were broken because inmates broke them. Warden wouldn't get them fixed. There's occasions up here in the wintertime when guys get snow blowing into their cells. Can I tell you about the guy who left here in cell number three? In the 50s and 60s, crime bosses in Wheeling were Big Bill Elias and Paul Hanks. Uh, Big Bill and Paul started feuding. Paul started his car one day, it blew up, and he lost his legs. Paul was in penitentiary in the 60s. In order to get Paul's wheelchair through there, he had to make an adjustment to the cell door. In a cage here, when you put her at the end of the cell block, there's a farm in that cage, if you next to that slam rock, it's right 